Hey everyone, it's Vu again. I recently got a question in the comments about how do I get a job at a startup? So I thought in this video, I would talk about kind of the differences between a large company and a startup uh, in the resume process, the interview process, to the job acceptance process. And yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So as a bit of an intro, I'm sure some of you coming into this video are thinking like, who is this guy? Why can I trust this guy? How is this person knowledgeable, right? Um, so for those of you that don't know, uh, with my background, I've actually went through Y Combinator, which is like this top um, startup accelerator twice as a founder. I founded three companies. I've hired a lot as a startup founder. And as an investor, I've probably invested in over 20 plus companies and have helped uh, startup companies hire for select roles. On the flip side of that, I also have a lot of experience as a senior manager um, at a large uh, Fortune 500 company, uh, designing interview questions, uh, being on the interview loop, hiring people, parsing through resumes, etc. So I've sort of seen both sides of the spectrum. This leads me to my first bit of advice if you're looking to get a job at a startup, which is even if you're looking and you'd know that you want a job at a startup, you should still understand the industry holistically and apply to medium-sized companies and large-sized uh, companies, regardless if you know you're not gonna take them or not. I know it's probably like a stupid thing to do, like why would you waste your time doing that if you know you're not gonna go for that? But the answer to that is really leverage. So the fact of the matter is we live in a capitalistic society. And what that means is typically a job, uh, an employer is going to pay you as much as like minimally as possible, really, like to be frank. They'll pay you what they think is competitive and they'll pay you what they think you will take. And that's just like the way of life and that's just how things work. Um, you know, welcome to the real world, right? In order to get as much leverage as possible to negotiate your salary and even to close the job, you should really try to have other offers in your pocket, uh, particularly from large companies, right? So if say you had a standing offer from Google or, or Facebook and a startup wanted to hire you, you just kind of mentioned that and that's like social proofing for them. Because you're able to pass through this interview and you have like this uh, stamp of approval from a, a, a larger company, uh, many times, you know, smaller startups will look at that and think, okay, yeah, this guy is like probably pretty legit and honestly might just like interview you for the culture fit and not even worry super much about the technical. I, I've known that to happen several times as well, right? But regardless, if you have an offer from Google or Facebook, then you at least have a, a benchmark for, for them to match when it comes to time for the offer, which means you're gonna uh, be able to negotiate much higher salary and much higher equity. If you're looking to join a early stage startup, you probably don't want to join if you can't maximize the amount of equity you get because if all things are equal in terms of salary, the equity is what's really gonna make you tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars maybe uh, in the future. Uh, so that's really why you want this leverage going in uh, in order to maximize this, um, this you know, variable in this equation. So with that being said, what exactly are large company interviews like and then how do they differ from startups, right? At a very large company, the interview process is not super different than exams in school, right? Um, it's very cookie cutter. They push you along through a funnel. It's like you're on a conveyor belt and then if you get the, to the end of the conveyor belt, then you basically get an offer in hand and then you can choose to uh, accept it or not and there's like this um, negotiation process, right? So. The reason why it's such a well-oiled machine is because of the parameters that large companies have to operate in. A large company such as Facebook or Google, when they're interviewing engineers, they're probably doing hundreds of interviews per week and they're probably sifting through thousands of resumes per week. Um, and therefore, if this process was not scalable, there is no way that Google or Facebook could hire in the capacity that they need. In order for it to be scalable, it has to be something that's uh, replicatable. And a replicatable interview um, oftentimes looks like an exam, right? 
there's no way you can uh, give a scalable grade to 300 students, for example, if you didn't have something that was standardized. And that's the same practice that goes into large industries. These interview questions have to be standardized. They generally pick from a bucket. That way you can swap in interviewers willy-nilly and it's all like fungible, right? The general idea is that if you hire an engineer for a particular team, this engineer would be able to fit across multiple teams. You're not really interviewing them for one specific skill set. You're trying to give them a very general interview just to understand if they have like the core competencies of an engineer. That being said, this process does have a lot of downside. Because these interview questions and this interview process is so standardized, it doesn't really evaluate you based upon you. So things about your unique background, unique skill sets, anything unique doesn't really um, contribute very much into um, whether or not you get the job. For large companies, this is what they aim for, right? Because think about it. If, if there is variance amongst the interview uh, question, there's a lot of potential for discrimination and litigation. It's very done on purpose for them to treat you very agnostic to who you are, uh, but that allows them not to discriminate and to be extremely uh, fair and consistent in their hiring practices, which is overall a good thing. So on the flip side of that, you have startups. Startups don't really care as much about foundational and fundamental knowledge, right? So typically in general, and I can't speak for all startups, but in general, I found startups to care a lot less about things such as data structures or algorithms, um, less of the trivia things, uh, less of the foundational things, and more about just trying to answer the question of, can you do the job at hand? You have to understand what goes on day to day at a startup, right? Like a startup, even, even the best run startups are like a month away from like complete chaos. And that's how it runs, right? If this was an assembly line, everything comes in just in time. They're hiring you because they need a very specific role filled. They need a very specific type of engineer that can do a very specific job. Uh, normally, Startups, they don't really have the capacity to hire hundreds of engineers, but not even that, like 10 engineers or even one engineer, and then not exactly know what they'll be working on. Large companies can do this because the thought is they always need a scale and the system in its of itself is so big that if a single engineer is not needed there, you can always reallocate this resource to another team that needs it eventually. A startup, on the other hand, can't afford that. Again, if they're interviewing you, they probably have a very specific task that they need you to do. And the way you get the job is that you understand exactly what they need you to do. And then hopefully you can do that exact job. If you can do that, you can land the job, right? So let's kind of break that down. One, how do you know exactly what job they need you to do? Uh, well, read the job description and, you know, see, hey, does that sound right? And then in your interview, your phone screen with whomever you're talking to, make sure to ask a lot of questions, right? Ask about their stack. Uh, ask about, you know, what they're using in the front end, the back end, um, where they're deploying, how they're regionalizing this, uh, what they're doing, you know, for iOS or Android. Are you using Flutter? Are you building native? Like, really try to deeply understand uh, what problems that they're facing. And once you understand that, and you truly believe that you can help them solve their problems, you just try to communicate that as best and effectively as possible. And I guarantee you, you're going to be better than like at least 80% of the candidates that come in. So beyond just telling them that you can do the job and hopefully you can do the job, another thing that smaller companies tend to look for is uh, culture fit. Right, so culture fit basically is just a bloated term to mean like, do they think they can work with you personally? Now again, as I mentioned, the difference between a small company and a large company is that in a large company, there's a lot less emphasis on personality, on, on culture fit. 
um, just because that has a lot of potentiality to be very subjective and lead to a lot of lawsuits, right? Large companies don't want that. On the other hand, smaller companies, culture fit is a super important thing because let's say you have 10 people only at a startup and you're all jamming together. It's like bringing an additional person to the band, you know? Like you can just have one Yoko Ono and then it just ruins it for everybody, right? Um, therefore, people are really going to try to ask and understand your personality, your background, your interests to see if you will all gel super well together. So in order to kind of pass this phase, I think it's actually pretty important to communicate a couple things. First and foremost, you need to communicate why you want the job. And I know that sounds really stupid and super cliche, right? Like, why do I want this job? Well, I want to get paid. Well, that's like the very obvious answer. And believe me, everybody knows that. Like, no one would be working if they didn't want to get paid. Well, that's not true. But anyways, what they really want to know is they want to understand what intrinsically motivates you. And hopefully these intrinsic things in, uh, aligns with what that company's mission is, right? So if this company is a startup that's like, let's, let's take Coinbase, right? Um, let's say you were applying for Coinbase 10 years ago. You'd probably want to have an interest in crypto, right? I highly doubt if you weren't interested in crypto, I don't think they would hire you unless you're like some brilliant engineer. But even if at the earliest stage, if you didn't have a foundational intrinsic interest in cryptography, cryptocurrency, no, that's not going to work. So really at the interview stage, make sure that you have the opportunity to communicate that what you believe as a person aligns with this mission of this company. And if you do that with number one, which is demonstrate that you can do the job, this is like 99% chance you're going to land this job. The last and final thing uh, that sort of relates to number two that you should try to demonstrate is your sense of hustle, right? So everybody at a startup, they're generally hustlers. And what do we mean by hustle? I'm not talking about like robbing a bank or anything, but hustle in startup terms typically means a person that is hungry. And when I say hungry, I don't mean like literally hungry for food. I mean like somebody that has an, an impassioned energy to go out and do it, like a bias towards action, somebody that wants to wake up in the morning and get the job done. Um, most people at a startup fall within this category, at least within the early stage. Like they wouldn't quit their jobs and join a startup if they didn't want and desire something more. And how you demonstrate this probably goes into like kind of like the cultural questions and stuff like that. But uh, it's really about talking about your side projects, the things you do um, in your spare time, um, the hacks that you employ, um, that's kind of how you demonstrate hustle. So in summary, the reason why I love startups is that typically when they're interviewing people, they're really looking for a particular person. And you're either that person or you're not, right? The best thing you can do when applying for these jobs is to put your whole self in it. Don't like um, pull punches or anything. Really show them who you are and what you've got and demonstrate that to the best of your ability. And that's the best that you can do. If it ends up that they're, they're needing somebody that, that does React and you only do iOS, there's no hard feelings there because that's just not who they're looking for. But if you go in there uh, very genuine, very hungry, and you're able to explain to them concisely what you bring to the table, then the, the ball is really in their court. And at that point, it's really just a numbers game, right? You apply to enough startups and there will be startups that are looking for you. And when they find you, you know, when the glass slipper fits, it's gonna feel really good, right? It's gonna feel really different, I think, than getting a job at a large company because at a large company, you know that in order for you to get that job, basically what you did was just jump through a bunch of hoops and like kind of made it through all these trials, right? I think if I just had to leave you with one bit of advice, it's to understand what kind of engineer you are and then stick with it. If you love Flutter, 
if you love React Native, and I know a lot of you guys in, in my comments that you really love Flutter, double down on that. Don't try to be someone you're not. Just because a startup's looking for an iOS engineer, like don't pretend that you know iOS uh, where you really care more about Flutter. I, I would just advise you to look somewhere else. And then once you find that startup that's looking for a Flutter engineer, because you're already invested so much time in this, you already have the, the GitHub uh, open source projects to show off. It's just about communicating about yourself and sharing with them who you are. And if it works out, it works out. And if it doesn't, then you'll find another one. That's my advice to you on how you get a job at a startup. Be yourself. Uh, anyways, if this was helpful, hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.